Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So part of the reptile adventure is learning all about the science behind the equipment that we use every day in our collections. So I'm here right now at the Zilla headquarters, and Ryan McVeigh is going to teach us literally everything we need to know about UV lighting. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. So today we're kind of going to go over UV lighting and why it's important for your animals, and the differences in UV, and basically this whole tangled mess of information and what it all means. So to start out, we're going to take a look at some of the different UV coil bulbs. There's a lot of kind of controversy over UV coils. Um, but I found that they're probably one of the better sources, in my opinion, for UV. Uh, we've got a couple different manufacturers, uh, Zilla, Tropical UVB, and the Reptisun Zoomed 5.0s, which would be their tropical bulb. And then we've got Exoterra's 150, which is a desert, and then Zilla's Desert 50. Then we've got our setup right here. We are going to take these, we're going to plug them in, and we're going to test the UV index and the UVB at 12 inches. The first thing you got to know about UV is UV is split up into three groups. UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA affects animals and humans in uh, their natural instincts, how they see their environment. If anybody's ever seen uh, pictures of how bees see flowers and the different patterns they have that we can't see, that's UVA and that's how they see flowers. Reptiles see their environment like that too, so uh, how they see their food, how they see each other um, differs under UVA. Uh, UVB is used to synthesize vitamin D3 and metabolize calcium, which all reptiles need for bone growth as well as uh, all their nervous system. Um, and then UVC is generally in the wild and outside filtered by the ozone, but with a lot of these bulbs and things that are made uh, man-made, it can there can be more UVC. It's used for sterilization. It actually breaks down biological material, so it's used to st in, in the medical field and things like that, and you don't want to use a lot of UVC. So first we'll take on the tropical bulbs. These are all brand new bulbs, so right out of the box. There is a burn-in period for a lot of bulbs. You'll actually get a higher reading right away when you first open them than you will, say, 48 hours later. But as long as they're all right out of the box, the comparison is pretty equivalent. You gotta remember that although it's producing both visible light and UV light, the UV light degrades over time. So it does, they're the UV wavelength. It doesn't produce that same amount forever. It slowly degrades over time. So even though your bulb works and is giving off light, it doesn't mean it's giving off UV. So the brightness of the bulb also doesn't exactly pertain to how much UV is given off. So a brighter bulb doesn't exactly mean it gives off more UV energy, um, but it doesn't mean it gives off less. It's all dependent on a lot of things that have to do with the energy given off by the bulb. So if we look at this one, we are measuring these at 12 inches uh, from the bulb straight to the meter. We're measuring this one as UVB. So you want to be right underneath it, pointing right at the bulb, creating six microwatts of UVB. It's microwatts per square centimeter, which is how this is measured over uh, the amount of energy given off by the bulb in that spectrum over a certain area. Um, and then if we look at the UV index, we want a very low UV index, which is good. So a point, to bounce around a little bit, but we'll say 0 0.6, 0 0.7 UV index, um, which is gonna be under a very minimum UV index. So again, that sun burning ability, that ability that could hurt your animal's eyes or that you know burns our skin, um, that's very low. So that's what you want out of a bulb. So this is our the Zilla Tropical 25, which the big difference between what you're seeing with tropical and desert bulbs is that your tropical animals are gonna be under a canopy of plants and, and they're gonna have more of a filtered light versus your desert animals that are gonna sit out on a rock in the middle of the desert in the middle of the sand and get that direct heat. So their UV is a lot higher and what they're exposed to is higher. So with this bulb, you're gonna see it's another, again, a kind of whitish bluish, bluish light. It's not really bright, but again, you don't want a very bright, you, the bright light doesn't mean a lot of UV. So same thing at 12 inches. Now we're getting a little more stabilized around probably 40 microwatts per square centimeter, 39. So what you'll see with the Zilla lights, um, but they're actually gonna be about 10 to 20% higher at the start at 12 inches. Um, they're rated at 25, that's what tropical 25 means. Um, they're 25 microwatts per square centimeter at 12 inches. 
Um, they're going to be a little bit higher than that even after they stable out. And it gives a little bit of a cushion, makes the bulbs last a little bit longer. It's not enough where it's pushing the UV limits really high, but it's enough to add a little bit extra time to that bulb. Um, and then you've got the UV index, which again is important. And we're looking at they're around probably a 2.0. It bounces around a little bit, but a 1.9 to a 2.1, so probably about a 2.0. Your tropical bulbs are going to be good for any types of iguanids, um, Chinese water dragons, turtles and tur any tropical uh, tortoises or, or turtles are good for it. The other thing I like to use uh, the tropical bulbs for is the 13 watt tropical bulbs that don't give off as much UV are really good for crepuscular species like a lot of your geckos, um, things like corn snakes. Um, there's research out there that shows that corn snakes and rattlesnakes use UVB to met metabolize uh, D3 and, and absorb calcium. So um, it's still really important. Although those animals are generally thought of as nocturnal, they're really crepuscular. So they're out during the evening and the morning. They still get UV. They just don't need as much of it as a lot of other animals. So providing them with UV is going to, uh, the UVA and UVB is going to increase their health, increase their immune system, increase their natural activities, give them a better circadian rhythm or a day night cycle. Um, and you're going to see healthier, more active animals generally with a UVA, UVB source. So yeah, so it's not always desert and tropical. Um, when it comes to the tropical stuff, just think lower UV. So things like a leopard gecko is more of a desert animal, but it doesn't need as much UVB because it's crepuscular, so you can use a tropical bulb. Um, and that way you're not overdoing the UV on it. Because remember, those guys don't bask, but they do use it. They do absorb UV radiation. They do use UVB. Um, so giving them a lower wattage, lower... Uh, intensity UV bulb is going to be good for them. So this is going to be more your, uh, again, your crepuscular animals, your turtles, your tropical animals. Um, this UV, desert UV, is going to be more your bearded dragons, your mastics, monitors. Um, honestly, even you can use it for like desert chelonians, so your uh, sulcata tortoises. Um, and I like to use it on um, also things that are really UV sensitive. Next up, we got the desert bulbs. We're going to start out with this Exoterra uh, UVB Reptile one, uh, 150. Now, Exoterra changed their bulb scheme not too long ago from 2.0, 5.0, 10.0 to uh, 100, 150, 200. Um, and this is just their rating of their bulbs going from more desert to more tropical. Uh, this is their 150, so this is their desert bulb. And again, we're measuring this all at the same, all equal 12 inches. And the 12 inches from the top of here to the top of the meters. Remember that, again, none of these bulbs are really bright, but that's not what you're going for with these bulbs. You're not looking to light up a room. You're looking to get a specific type of light out of it that's going to help your animals. All right, so if we go in here and we measure UVB, we're measuring two microwatts per square centimeter. And then for UV index, which again is measuring the spectrum of the UVB that's, uh, for, that can give you a sunburn. So UV index of 0.6, which is good. It's a very low UV index. What that has to do with your reptiles is that UV index is the intensity of that UV light. So the higher the UV index of a bulb, the more likely it is to still give your reptiles a sunburn, hurt their eyes, things like that. So what you're trying to do with a UV bulb and what manufacturers are trying to do is create something that gives off a lot of UVB and a lot of UVA in those wavelengths um, that pertain to how reptiles absorb that, but not as much UVC because you don't want to give them a sunburn while you're trying to give them that light that they need. All right, so when it comes to the bulbs, the higher you want a UVB rating that's going to be higher. Um, most reptiles aren't going to be able to use the UV um, if it's below 13 microwatts per square centimeter. Um, in that range, it's, I mean, if it's lower than that, it's not very usable for them. So you want it to be higher than that. So again, higher UV output is going to be better for the animal, uh, UVB output. You still want to make sure that the UV index is low uh, in that low to, to minimal range. So your Desert 50 bulbs and all your Desert bulbs, these are going to be for Euromastics, uh, Bearded Dragons, uh, any types of monitors. I like to use them for tortoises that need high UVB outputs, Shalonians, uh, so any Shalonians that need it, um, chameleons. Um, basically anything that needs high UV. The other nice thing with them is if you ever have an animal that has hypocalcemia or has is developing metabolic bone disease and needs more calcium, you can kind of give them a better jump start by giving them a bulb that has a higher UV rating or UVB output. So almost all reptiles will use UV, um, whether it's UVA or UVB, um, they all almost all of them use it. But when it comes to UVB, the only animal I'm aware of reptile-wise, there's probably quite a few of them, but the one I'm aware of is your ball pythons are one of the few that don't use UVB. Um, they still use UVA and it still has a lot to do subconsciously with um, how they see their environment and their day-night cycle. So it's still positive, it's still a good, good, way to, a good thing for the animals in their enclosure to have UV. Um, the reality is we're all trying to build these amazing enclosures and mimic their natural habitat. 
Um, it's hard to mimic their natural habitat if you leave out the biggest part of their natural habitat, which is the sun. And the light that a UVA and a UVB bulb gives off fills in the, some, some of the spectrums of the sun that are important to living animals that a heat bulb is not going to give off by itself. All right, so there's one last important thing to think about when it comes to UV coils. Uh, there's two types of domes that are out there. You have a silver dome that has a silver inside, and then you have domes that are black and they have a white painted inside. So that interior makes a big difference on how that UV reflects out of this fixture. So when we did this with the Desert 50 uh, Zillow, which is what's in here, we got around 49 to 50 microwatts at 12 inches. Now if we look at it with the silver dome, so we're getting 104 microwatts at 12 inches, where before we were only getting 49 to 50. So we've effectively doubled the output of the UV just by changing the reflector of the dome to a polished aluminum dome. So the UV index doubled as well, but we're still within the low to moderate range. So this is important if you've got an animal, like if you've got tortoises and you want to get their UV, it needs to be close to them to be effective when it comes to most domes, but you may not be able to get it very close to them if you have them in a large pit. Doing a silver dome allows you to basically concentrate that UV and throw a lot more of it down so that you get more range out of it. So now, instead of at 12 inches hitting 50 microwatts, we're hitting 104. So you're actually able to almost double the distance or raise the distance that you can get away from the animal and still get that same amount of output. So it allows you to throw that UV further. That's also important in large cages that maybe you have a two by two by four foot tall cage and you have an iguana or something in there and you need to get that UV to that animal. Uh, you're able to give them a longer UV gradient than you would in a standard dome. All right, so we're looking at a desert slim line from Zilla, and this is a T8 fluorescent tube bulb. So different from the coil in the fact that the coil is a bent piece of glass that's coiled into a coil. Um, and the ballast for a uh, compact fluorescent is in the base of the bulb. The ballast for these is inside the fixture. That's really the only difference is you have a straight tube versus a, a coiled tube. Um, the internal components are the same. The way they work is the same. Um, except the ballast in this is in the fixture. The ballast in a compact fluorescent is the base of the light. All right, so we adjusted this to be 12 inches from the bulb to the top of the UV meter. So we're gonna read it at the exact same length we were with the coils. Again, this is another fixture or another bulb where this isn't a bulb that's meant to light your entire, U your entire cage. It's meant to provide UV light. So it may not be that intense bright light you're looking for, but remember, that's not what we're going for with this bulb. So we're gonna read it at 12 inches. And again, this is a Desert 50. This is another one that over time is gonna to continue to build up a little bit as it warms up. Uh, and then it's gonna hit a, a standard, it's gonna sit there, and then it's gonna have a burn-in period over the next 48 hours, where it's just come down a little bit and then it levels out. So right now we're at 47. One thing to remember is that animals do like to regulate their UVB. Animals that like UVB don't sit out in the desert on a rock under the sun all day. They hide, they look for shade. Um, so they don't always want heat in UV. Um, and like you create a heat gradient within your tank, you also want to create a UV gradient. With a strip light, you're creating a UV gradient that's only up and down, so it's only vertical. If you go side to side, you're going to at the same length, you're going to get the same UV all the way across. But as you go up and down away from the ball, you're going to create that gradient. The nice thing about a coil compact fluorescent is you're creating a gradient both up and down, but also horizontally. So you're creating a more 3D gradient for that animal to find a place that it wants to sit and absorb that lighting. Um, there's been studies done that show that animals like chameleons will regulate their UV and their heat independently of each other. So giving them a source for heat and UV and then UV on its, by itself with a gradient in between is important for their health and happy life. All right, now one thing with these bulbs, with these units, and I get asked a lot, is there is a plastic reflector on here. Many people know that plastic does not allow UV light through it. This is a very special UV transmittent plastic that's been created by Zilla, it lets UV light through. So this thick bulb is rated at around 50 microwatts at 12 inches with this on. So the last thing we want to look at is different, the more bulbs you add, not only the more light are you creating, but the more UV you're creating. It starts to add on to itself. So I've got a fixture right here that can hold up to six lights. And then we've got these small Zilla uh, six watt uh, mini compact fluorescent UVB bulbs. And we're gonna continue to add them and show how that UV increases with the more of these bulbs you add. So if you have an animal that uh, really needs a lot of UV or you have a really tall tank and you need that UV to get lower, you can add more fixtures to get more UV and get it to reach deeper. So we'll start with the first one. I'm gonna plug it in, it's gonna turn on right away. All right. I'm going to measure out 
12 inches from the bulb. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to check the UV. We're getting 23, 22, 23 microwatts off that one bulb. I'm going to take another bulb, plug it in right here, let it turn on. Have it move this. Now we're getting double, 26, 20, or 46, 48, 49. So we're increasing the UV by the bulbs and it's almost additive. So it's not an average, you get almost an added, the more you put in, the more UV you get. So a third one, and we'll add two more. Third and a fourth one. And these are all the exact same bulbs. And now if we look at this again, 77, 78. So with these small six watt bulbs, with multiples of them in a fixture like this Pro Soul fixture, we're able to get the same or higher UV output than we get out of the bigger bulbs. So it, the more you add, the more UV you get. It's not just increasing the space and the area, you're increasing the amount of UV you get out of it. So with bigger cages using a silver dome and a Desert 50, using two of those, you can get 50 microwatts at four feet down. Which is, again, gonna be important for things like larger cages with iguanids, or if you have your light suspended above tortoise, a tortoise pit, or your turtle pens. All right, so to wrap this all up, there's some major points you wanna take home. One, every animal can use UVB, and a lot of animals need it. So if, you're gonna use, if you have a bearded dragon or a Euromastix, you wanna use a desert bulb. If you have a tropical species like an iguana, but it has a big cage, then you wanna use a desert bulb to give it more distance on the UV to fill that cage better. Uh, if you have an animal that's a tropical animal, such as turtles um, or your Chinese water dragons, those need UVB and you're gonna to wanna to use a tropical bulb. Tropical bulbs also work really well for crepuscular animals like leopard geckos um, and other types of snakes like corn snakes that'll use UVB but they don't need a lot of it. The next thing to remember is that even though the light is bright, it doesn't mean it's giving off UV. So you wanna make sure to change your bulbs at least every year or every six months, depending on the brand. So look at the manufacturer's recommendations and make sure to follow it. A good thing to do is take a Sharpie and write on the base of the bulb or write on the bulb with the date that you put it in so you remember when a year has come up. After a year, it's not giving off as much UVB and your animal won't be able to use it. So to wrap this up, all animals can use UVA and UVB. There's a lot of animals that need it, so make sure you are doing your research and figuring out what animals need what kinds of lights. Desert species and desert lights are big cages with desert lights. Tropical species with tropical UVB. Make sure you're replacing it yearly or by the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, and just make sure that you have the right lighting to keep your animal healthy and happy. So there it is, Rattlers. UV lighting is so important in keeping so many different species in our collection. So again, as Ryan said, do your research, figure out exactly what kind of UV light your reptile needs to thrive. Also, hit that subscribe button when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Hit that like button, share this video. Also, I recently launched Patreon, that link is in the description below. Check that out as well. And until the next adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.